when I trade with the tight stop loss, I like to see the markets in five minutes. And when I traded with the bigger stop loss, I like to see the markets in a, in a bigger time frame. Welcome traders to a new episode of our funded series. Let's dive into what it takes to pass the two-phase evaluation and get funded up to $400,000. Welcome, Jayesh, to True Forex Funds. You are from the beautiful, sunny Tenerife, Spain. I believe you have a really good weather there. Uh, you weather yes. throughout the winter this time, and you're making great profits with True Forex Funds. Now, anyone else who's watching us for the first time, we are a proprietary trading firm, and you have participated in our challenge, passed our two-phase evaluation, and became our funded trader. And now you are successfully trading, making some profits, and you receive the 80% of overall profits you're making on the funded program, and 20% stays at the company. So we are really happy you're trading this excellently. And we would wanna know a little bit more about you. How, do you. how does a trading day goes for you? What are your plans? How do you structure your trading style? Uh, but first, uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get interested in trading and what's your uh, overall background? So I'm, my name is Jayesh and I was, I was born in India and I came to Spain when I was 13 years old. And uh, I was brought up here in the Canary Islands. And yeah, as you told, the weather is very sunny and it's really, very good. And but I like to keep traveling. So like a few months ago, I was traveling and I wasn't I passed the winter in some other countries in Europe. And uh, yeah. And for the trading, for example, and before I was uh, before getting into trading, I was a uh, I was a chef. Two years ago, I started I was working as a chef in, uh, in the mainland in the north of Spain. And and after working as a chef, the, when COVID came and and then I, 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 I couldn't work and do anything else. So I started to trade and I found, uh, I found a bigger passion in trading because it gave me something, something more bigger for trying to get something, getting the financial freedom, you know? So I quit my job. You became a full-time yeah. trader basically in yeah. a matter no. of Act months? Act uh, no, uh, it was basically I was already a crypto investor before in before in 2018. So I I basically started investing in crypto with my brother, and we both were trading in crypto, and we wanted to we wanted we always wanted that financial freedom. So we started trading in cryptos, and then I was working as a chef, and then after COVID, I started dedicated dedicating more of myself to the forex trading i started uh, learning about forex trading and i started with learning from different people like my brother was a forex trader i i used to see him trade and i met many different types of traders online and i started with many signal groups and i started with a very small account of ic markets like all the traders do and in, in, when I had a very small account, I used to lose, I think everybody needs to lose money in trading when they start. So we started, I, and then I started, uh, like, by the way, how yeah, did so you get involved with trading? I used to, for example, I used to, I used to work with, with the, someone who introduced me to cryptos actually, before going to study as, uh, I studied a chef course for two years. So then uh, I, I, I used to be like, uh, I used to, like, I, as I told you, I was a crypto investor and trade, I used to trade in cryptos. I started meeting many people online and Telegram and stuff. I started trading in Forex, but I saw the Forex trading in a different way than most of others because I started uh, joining uh, signal groups and I met many people and I started learning different psychology and I started learning from each mistakes or each trader made. Like many traders were very good uh, analyzing the graphs and stuff, but they they, they had the, the psychology part missing because they used to take very good trades. And I used to see their mistakes. I used to see many mistakes many people used to make in trading. And so the first thing I learned was basically the, the psychology part more than 
the the graph analyzing you know after seeing many people trading in their own way i and learning from their mistakes i made my own strategy how i would like to trade and with others mistakes i i came out with my own trading strategy and and yeah that's that's so the way you basically have your own technical strategy and with experience yeah, I, you have the good psychology part to manage your risk to manage your profit and that what uh, keeps you in the profitable 1% of forex traders yeah and yeah for example i know the 90% for example for example fail and and for example uh, for example when i started in the prop firms i lost like a lot of money and i always wanted to try different types of strategies and when when yeah and my brother for example my brother introduced me to the prop firms and i always wanted to do something very big in 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 my life but when 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 he told me about the prop firms i was like really very excited because i saw i saw the future with it and i i, I knew i could make like a lot of profits with it but of course in the starting nothing is very nothing is easy at all you have to fall you have to fail and yeah i i when i when i started in the prop firm industry i lost like a lot of money i i think i would have invested more than 40 to 50000 and lost in many many different different things i tried i i have tried different types of services different types of boards and eas and everything but no at last at last at last the important thing is learn on your own and trade with your own psychology and just just do just follow your own trading rules and you will you can you will you will you can pass the challenge yeah that's a great motivation and do you uh, yeah. trade with manually with your own trading style or do you use some kind of expert yeah. advisor now that no no i i use, i have tried every i have tried many expert advisors in the in in, uh, in the past but everything has failed so in the starting it would give you really nice profits and everything but everything at last is going to fail hmm. at least in my own experience i don't want to tell that all everyone everything is everything works in the same way but yeah personally in my own experience i feel that's that's not it doesn't work uh doesn't work well in the long term yeah yeah and um how how many years did you trade with a broker account and how many years are you trading for a prop account now okay yeah so for in the starting 6 months i used to trade with a with a very small account in march 2020 when after covid i was free at home so i started trading in in the small small ice market accounts but it was for 6 7 months then i made a i used to make a bigger account i had a 2500 3000 dollar account but it was always i always used to and i used to follow signal groups at last in the starting so after following many people i i just used to lose a lot of money and at last it's it used to treat it like gambling because people don't realize that when in a in a 2000 dollar account you make 200 dollars that's 10% that's like a huge amount but people just see the num- small number of 200 they don't see it's 10% so then i realized that uh after that i uh, in uh, one and half uh, so one and half year before i i came to know about the prop firms and and then i i started investing and in the starting i used to, i thought that yeah it's just 10% because i thought yeah for in a small account of 2000 dollars i have made 200 to 400 dollars that's just 10 to 20% so yeah this is really easy i'm going to i can make it in one day and yeah of course you, you i took it i took a challenge and i took I, take, i took a challenge and i i tried it and yeah it, it you take it out in one day and of course but after that in the second phase you fail of course one day one trade can go very good, good but after that again you're going to fail something is going to happen and and yeah so in the prop form i was like basically i i i tried i started trading one and a half year ago as i told you and uh, and yeah the funded trader i became from december after so many tries and so many things i have tried in in all these you know in this one and a half year i at last i got funded recently in december with you with you guys through for expense i first took out a 200 200k account and then i passed a 
100k recent 100k too and so i just joined the account and i had now 300k funded with you guys yeah i saw also you merged the funded accounts i believe it's much easier to manage only one account and that option yeah. is available at trueforex fund yeah normally for example i sometimes even use uh uh like i have few different accounts as well so i use a copier and i have all the accounts set but yeah i wanted just to i just wanted to have a bigger account for for trading it more easily as well okay do you have someone who inspires you or motivates you yeah. to be better yeah yeah my for example when i got into trading my biggest motivation was my brother because he started in he started as crypto investor and he had he he used to do he used to trade he used to he started trading gold and i learned a lot from him and uh, yeah so he motivates me in, in in the world of trading and everything so thanks to him i got into this world i quit my job also because i want like i wanted to have like a financial freedom and travel all over the world i wanted something big and of course uh, working for someone else you're going to be always you're going to be stuck in the same place and for a job from 9 to 5 i always wanted to quit that 9 to 5 job and depend on someone else so and after after seeing him i even quit my job and started trading and yeah and all with all my mistakes i do and all the lessons i have learned is thanks to him because he he supports me in everything and we both are like very 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 close and we share each and everything with each other and and yeah we learn things from each other we we grow we grow together and yeah and we motivate each other we trade together sometimes we share ideas and of course at last uh even i learned that everybody everybody sees the market in a different way everybody sees the trading business in a different way as well uh it's for example you can uh you can you can analyze a graph very nicely but at last the important thing is take the trade be in the trade how 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 you want the trade to go everything so so yeah that's every, everything is counted and it's important and do you call your brother as your mentor or did you have other mentors throughout your experience of becoming a professional trader no like uh, as i told you i my mentor my my mentor yeah i learned trading from in the start from my brother but after that i started meeting more traders from many different part of the world like recently i i traveled to india and i met two different traders from there and it was like a very different experience and again i want to go and meet a few different traders again i have, i've met them online so i just want to go visit them uh in in the next month so yeah and yeah from island so yeah i learned tra le tra trading from from my brother and after that i met many different traders and and yeah the and i learned different types of psychology from each one and and made my own and how was your traveling in india and learning from traders and new strategies if you could uh, tell us a little bit about that last year i went to india because i wanted some a little bit change in my life because i was into the prop firms from more than as i told you more than one and a half years and each time i used to fail so i wanted a break so i and i went to india and i was in a different world so i i, I wanted i wanted a break so i went to india and there i met uh, one trader i used to speak to him like from long time and i and, and i met him and he motivated me he showed me his trading rules he showed me how he trades i learned how to trade gold from him more better in a different way how he sees how he sees it in a, how he sees the market and i learned many rules from him like like how he starts his trading day and how what rules he reads and yeah so i followed those rule and it was like it was like very uh i learned i learned all those rules from him and it changed it changed my mind in trading actually and after a few months i met him again before coming here and he motivated me more he and after that i came here i started trading gold in a different way and different currency pairs as well i trade gold and forex pairs as well so i learned different strategy and this more important the psychology and the the rules you have to follow before trading or before starting your day i think it's more important than 
than anything else. So yeah, I learned a few rules from him. And after that, I came I came back to, to Tenerife. And after that, I motivated myself more. And from November, I I I wanted the change and I I got into I got more into the funded accounts and I got funded at last in December. Do you think it's uh, recommended to uh, sit down with a new community, learn from each other, uh, implement new strategies or daily habits to better our trading? Yeah. See, for example, uh, I think mistake uh, the uh, the big mistake that many traders do is that uh, they think they are always right and they don't want to they don't want to meet different traders or. Uh, study about different and uh, different different point of view or how the different people person is seeing the market so that was a like advantage for me as well so in the starting i was not i didn't uh, start studying the graphs and, and analyzing the trades with the graphs so that helped me more for learning from others so when once you once you think you're a trader you don't like to listen to others or see different point of view but i think you can take it as a advantage and and you can take it as advantage for your own self also and uh, learn from the, those mistakes and even grow together as well and like share different types of views and and trade uh, trade in a different way I also like your background, that there are some whiteboard with some statistics, some data, a TV running, maybe Bloomberg, uh, what you yeah, that's includes fundamental. Yeah. Is this also with, in line with your daily uh, habits? So normally I like to have a good setup while trading and I like to have the news. But normally we put, I put sometimes uh, the graphs or sometimes I have the news when, I ha when I'm in a trade. And in the whiteboard, we just I just keep writing my different different trades and like all the mistakes and mistakes I make, you know. So after analyzing a trading day, I like to sit and have a look at my mistakes and even the profits you made. Like I like to have a look at a good trade and a bad trade too. Can you tell us a little bit about how do you plan your day? So the first thing I get up and I, what I do is I start meditating because I like to start the day with the positivity because I like to attract positiveness. So, and then I look at a trade, look at any trades of if I have on the previous day or night, normally I don't like to leave any trades in the nights, but yeah, if I have any trades, I like to look at them. And, and first thing I do is watch gold i just like to watch and if the market is giving me a good opportunity so i take it and always in europe i like to uh, i like to trade in europe but in a in a short short time you know because because it, i i personally feel that uh, in europe it's good for like uh, a trade for 20 to 30 pips and in us in the us session i like to have like a more bigger risk ratio trade and a and a big trade so yeah so when when europe gives me some little bit good profits i take it and in us maybe I, it gives me a better entry in the same trade and uh, yeah and after that for before starting my trading day I, I for example i read some read some rules every day that's the that's the thing i always i do it every day before starting my trading day and that i learned from the person who I told you before, uh, who I met, uh, the trader in India. And for me, I think to become a successful trader, uh, the first thing is patience. And, uh, the, and, the, and the 90% of the game is discipline and the psychology and the mindset. If you're if you always going to trade with discipline, you're going to be a successful trader. If you want success in, in trading, uh, you always have to trade with discipline. That's my opinion. And 90% of the game in trading is psychology, discipline, and, and uh, patience. May I know a little bit about what are the most important rules you follow to be a disciplined trader? Yeah. The most important rules I, I follow is that first thing is greed is very, very dangerous in, in trading. You shouldn't be greedy at all because once, once you get the greed in you, you always want more. You're not happy with what you get. 
So I learned that lesson and I apply it in my trading. For example, if I, I'll show you my dashboard in, in some time and you can see that I just, in a real account, I traded very differently from the, the challenge phases. In the real account, I trade maybe two to three days. I make good profits and I stop trading it after for 10 days until I get my withdrawal. After I get my withdrawal, I trade it again. So yeah, the most important rule for me is greed is very, very dangerous. And markets always is going to give you opportunities tomorrow. Today is not, not the last day to trade, you know. If, 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 if today is a losing, losing, losing day, tomorrow you can, get, uh, you can re recover the losses and you can have a very good trading day as well. And, and the other rule is the MT4 app is not a gaming app, you know. So you don't have to keep clicking and opening it because I, I, I feel it, it gives like, I, I have done all these mistakes. So with all these mistakes, I have made my own rules. So yeah. Even if it's weekend, even if it's a normal day, I, I used to always open MT4. So I realized that, yeah, MT4 is not a gaming app, so you don't have to open it and give your, like, of course, because people feel that opening MT4 and seeing your seeing a trade in blue numbers, it gives you a very good dopamine effect for your, for your mind. So, so, of course, so people love to open MT4 app. I was one of them, but I learned not to open. So, yeah. So, that's the another rule by the read. Uh, that MT4 is not an app to keep opening as a game. And I think you should keep your mind always busy in research and keep learning because the more you spend time uh, in front of your mobile and MT4, you try to search for new opportunities and keep trading. And at last, that's that tends to lose your account and you will even lose the challenges and the accounts as well. And, uh, and yeah, and to become a successful trader for me, the most important key is patience and, and 90% of the trading game is discipline, psychology, and the mindset. It's always, if you tra trade with discipline, you can, you are going to be successful. So you want to, if you want to get successful in the trading business, you have to be very disciplined. Do you treat uh, yeah. bad trading days or losing trading days and winning trading days the same? Okay, so I, for example, don't involve in, don't involve emotions in trading. You know, so you have to treat trade the trade the bad day and a good day the same way. You should it sh you shouldn't be affected with a winning day or not a losing day because if you have your risk managed, even if you have four to five tra bad trading days. In a one good trade with a good risk ratio, you can make it back with one trade. So, and always, you, as I told you, there are many opportunities in the future. You shouldn't involve emotions. You just shouldn't involve emotions. And I personally, if, if, if I have a losing day, I just see why, how did I lose or what mistakes did I make? And even if I have a winning day, I see how did the, how did the winning trade go? And why did it go in my favor and everything i like to i like to see both uh, a winning day also the same and a, a losing day also, also the same because i don't involve emotions in my trading and i think that's a very important that's a very important fact uh, that's a very important rule uh, everyone should follow that not involving emotions in your in your yeah. trading can you give us some practicals about how someone could uh detach their feelings from losing or winning like what do you do if you would make a loss uh, eventually people would get angry if they are starting trading at the first time but when they are winning they looking at their equity curve going up people get excited yeah. now yeah the angriness and excitement are really far apart from each other and then good traders tend to manage them uh, by handling these emotions at their right places uh, not getting too excited or not getting too angry. Um, yeah. How do you deal with these emotions? Do you have a yeah. practical way of uh, handling these kind of excitement or angriness? Yeah. First of all, the market is always going to pay you for being disciplined. So that's the most important thing. Uh, and and for example, when I have a and if you you have you should have your risk managed. If you have your if you have your risk calculated. Even if you win or you lose, 
it shouldn't affect you in any way. May I ask you, what do you do with your free time besides trading? Yeah. So in my normally when I have my free time, I like to go to to the beach and I like to walk near the sea. As as here we have good weather, I like to listen to the the wave sounds and there I like to go analyze my day. Like normally every evening, I like to go walk near the beach and listen to the waves and analyze my day as well. You know, like how how was my day? How did everything go? And yeah, that's and I like to travel. I like to meet people. Also, how many days do you normally trade on your uh, live account or funded account? Yeah, in my live account, normally I I trade three to four days, and because in in January I traded for three to four days, and in in February also, in in the end of January I traded three days. I made very good profits, and I stopped trading. I was waiting for the withdrawal, and now I started trading again. So. I started trading from Monday and now I have decent profits. So I think I'm going to stop and next week and concentrate in different challenges again. Can you show us some live examples perhaps about your trading setups, uh, maybe a little bit about the dashboard, your statistics, what it takes to become a funded trader? Yeah, this is my 100, 100K challenge I took it recently on last, last Friday I took it. And I I wanted to try something different in while passing this challenge. So I wanted to actually do some swing trades. But the first trade I took, as we can see here, I'll show you. So the first trade of GBP USD sell I took, I had a risk calculated very well. And with that, I wanted to do the trade actually with one or two trades. And the first trade I took. If I would have a little bit of patience and for a few days and leave the trade, it, it touched my TP later, but I closed it very soon. Mm -hmm. Then I realized I told myself, why did I do that when I bought the challenge for passing the account with one, with one or two trades as I had planned it? So then later, I said, okay, now again, I have to start doing my trades how I, how I wanted to do it. So then I started trading, and as you can see, I I was risking half uh, 0 0.8, half percent, 0 0.6, one, and I had few few bad trades, and I lost four to five percent. I was in drawdown. Then I it was okay because I knew that even if I have four to five bad trading days, I will have one good trade, which will recover all my losses, and that's what happened. So this is the Euro GBP buy I took, and I just risked. Uh, one percent, and I made seven seven thousand. So I made the account in hundred and four thousand, and then later I entered the trades and few touch break even, and I exited few trades because I think the most important thing a trader should do is when you know the when your trade is going in uh, your opposite direction and you know it's a bad trade, is the best thing is to exit it. Mm -hmm. And then, and the last trade I, which I took for going is before coming to Tenerife, I was in the flight and I took a, and I had a sell limit of USD CHF and it activated and it touched my take profit and made my phase one. And the phase two, I'm just passing it in these days. It's really okay. interesting that both of these trades are swing trades. Like I can see on USD CHF. It took you 23 yeah. hours from opening and closing. And yes. on Euro GBP, it took like 33, 38 hours. So fairly holding it overnight. Um, yeah. Be the reason why it's so profitable that you had a swing trade? Yes, because in the starting, I always, uh, when I started trading and in the problems, I used to make the risk ratio 1-1. One, one. And I never used to like the 1-1 one, one risk ratio because uh, when you have three bad trading days, you are minus three percent. But when you make one profit, one profit trading day, is, you're going to make one percent again. So it's really difficult to to balance the risk ratio when you trade one one. So I personally prefer, even if you risk one percent in per trade, even if you have four bad trades, and if you have a risk ratio of one three or one four, it will make your account and break even. So you have more trades if you if you have a bigger risk ratio than one one. And uh, yeah, so the USD CHF 
uh, and actually even uh, this CAD GP, the CAD JPY trade, for example, also was a swing trade. I, I that was a older trade than than the than the Euro GBP trade. Actually, the CAD JPY and Euro GBP the trade were going almost six percent. There was one percent left for doing the trade, but it turned it turned around and it touched my stop in a in a swap in the night because I had a stop loss. I have very small stop loss and in the during the spread it touched my stop loss and it and I lost more than the predict because I lost nine fifty two and I had to lose eight fifty. But that was my that was a mistake I had made with the swaps in the night. Okay, so this is the phase one I I, I passed in these days, like I showed you. And uh, and I'll show you uh, my live account how how it's going. Okay, so this is my this is my live account. I've traded these these days, and so the seventh February I took a, a gold trade and the USD CHF trade as well in the live account as in the phase one. And uh, okay, so these are the trades I took these days. So the the first trade touched top, and of course, normally it's very. It's it, it it I don't know why, but people tend to take it as a very negative way when uh, when your first trade touches the stop loss. Okay, so this is my live account, and I've been just trading it from last Friday, and and these two. The, this is the the best trade I've taken, the gold trade, which was a one to seven risk ratio. I will I risked thousand dollars for making five thousand eight hundred dollars for making five thousand eight hundred dollars so the risk ratio was the one 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 seven and uh, and that trade I took it while while I was in the flight so I risked very less because I when I, I personally feel that when you are not in front of the screen you should risk you should risk less and when you're trading very bad during a week also i think you should risk very less do you have a percentage you're taking your risk off from the original positions no i i, I for example uh, i don't uh, i don't use break even a lot but sometimes i take partial profits mm -hmm. or sometimes i even use break even also but depends on the trade and depends on the depends on the confidence i have it I have in the trade and if it's going to go up to my tp because the euro gbp trade okay so this is my dashboard and uh, this is the this is the profit i made till now in these in these uh, five five trading days and i think i'm going to stop in few days because i think slow and steady makes wins the race you know so i think slowly slow profit just be happy with it and withdraw your profits and then trade a new challenge or a demo account or whatever so that would be an advice from you also to uh cash out your profits and then start fresh yeah i personally prefer like that that uh you can i can i think you can keep increasing your your the payouts you you want or you can you you have to earn the right to trade trade with bigger lots and bigger size so i think in the starting for example like i'll show you my 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 payouts for example these are my these are my these are my payouts from from the last last uh, i had i've just had four five payouts and and it's already it's it's always been little smaller and uh, it's it's going gradually you know it started from 3000 2800 5000 11000 and of course the accounts also were bigger but i was i was very happy with uh with small profits so for example this is the 300k account which i had just uh in january and as you can see i just traded for 3 days 19 20 23 i just traded gold on that day and few forex pairs 
I made good profit. I made for five percent profit in the account, and I stopped trading it because, and I started I started buying a I I bought a new challenge and started concentrating my my time over there and dedicated my time over there because profits markets giving you profits. I think it's time to take it. I, yeah, I really so, like about your daily chart and the per trade chart also here. Uh, with this chart that going ascending to the top, like if you have some losses, they are just minor. This indicates also a good risk to reward ratio. You you have a high reward yes. and a low risk. That's why yes. it's gradually increasing. Yes. For example, the best the best uh, the best uh, trading the best graph I like personally was uh, this hundred k account which I which I bought it on twenty six January as you can see. And uh, and I I wanted to do uh, I wanted to take out the account with a swing trade, but and I wanted to take it out in two to three days. But as you can see, the result it's with with six trading days I passed the account with two big trades. And the graph of this is really very good because this is my one of my favorite graphs. I I like it because from hundred k it went it I just lost four percent and. I made seven percent in one trade, and it was the account was going almost in in a balanced way, and and one more trade made the profit, and made the phase one. You might have a good and, risk to reward ratio here also. Yes. Can yes. you show the statistics of the account a little bit? If you scroll down, then we will see the statistics about the uh, win rate and average risk to reward ratio. Wow, three point sixteen. Yeah, that's a good risk to reward ratio. Yes, this is the average risk ratio, and my and that and the average win is this one, and the loss is this one. I I personally think that your loss can't be bigger than your biggest win. Your it should be the 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 biggest loss. If it's it's for example, you can't lose fifteen hundred euros, fifteen hundred dollars in a in your the maximum losing day losing trade. And your biggest winning trade is six hundred dollars, you know. So I always feel that's the most important thing. That if you're risking fifteen hundred or one percent or whatever you're risking, at least you should make double of it. You can't close it with zero point five percent if you're risking one percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so normally I I like to enter trades with limit orders and this this one i had a limit order in 7 7 750 more or less and it activated and i entered because i i saw uh inverse head and shoulder pattern and i had a fibonacci level also i don't like to put many levels of fibonacci because i like to have clear clarity in my in my graphs and uh, and and see see my trades better and uh, yeah, once I saw one person, I, I still was seeing a very good bullish pressure. So I didn't put the account, uh, the trade in break even yet, because I felt that I have to stick to the plan and my analysis and my analysis and my plan was, my trading plan was telling me it's still going to go up and it would most probably that's the take profit before the stop loss. So once I, uh, I still hold the trade for one whole day and the next morning, I saw the account was in 2.5%. The trade was going 2.5%. And there I saw there is, there. in my opinion, I thought that, yeah, it wouldn't go back to my entry again. So I put the account in break even. And after that, there was a very important news also. So then I started when, once the trade was about over a year, I started putting trailing stops and I was assuring my, my profits, and then at last it touched my take profit, and I made the the seven percent in this trade. The risk about the risk ratio, but basically you could pull it into break even pretty fast after uh, getting filled into the trade. Yeah, but I I I was seeing a bullish pressure. I wanted to put break even before, but. Uh, I don't know why. I just wanted the. It was a challenge. But if it was a live of, live account, I would put break even uh, in a very very uh, before because I treat a live account in a different way and a challenge in a different way. So your even I didn't 
and because my risk was very calculated as well, that I just risked zero point eight percent to make to make uh, almost ten percent uh, uh, to make I risked zero point eight percent to make seven percent. So it was a good risk ratio. So I didn't mind even if it if it would go to my stop loss. Before the trades used to affect me a lot when when I had trades and when I used to see good profits and when it used to go to stop loss. It used to affect me a lot because I used to involve emotions in trading again, which is not a, the best best thing to do. Thank you for watching part one with Jayesh. This was only the tip of the iceberg and he will have more information and secrets revealed in the second part. So make sure to follow along, subscribe to don't miss out on new secrets like these.